Happy Friday, everyone. Welcome aboard. Welcome to our weekly Outlook webinar. My name is Ilyan Yotov, perhaps unfamiliar to many of you as the creator of the Quarters Theory. I'm also the host of a popular daily program called the All Things Forex Broadcast. You're, of course, invited to join me Monday through Friday on allthingsforex.com. It's also available on fxstreet.com if you like to listen there. And um, check out the book, The Quarters Theory, Revolution in New Foreign Currencies Trading Method. If you haven't done so yet, you can find it everywhere books are sold. What we're here today is to discuss and prepare for the top 10 spotlight economic events for the new trading week ahead. With that said, I'd like to thank our friends at fxstreet.com for putting together these series of webinars. Now, uh, the new trading week ahead is going to put in the spotlight the British pound and the US dollar. Those are going to be the two currencies that I will be focusing next week. And in particular, the currency pair that contains both of these currencies, which is the pound dollar currency pair. Now, uh, the very first spotlight event of next week is going to come from the United Kingdom, and that's going to kick in a sequence of important economic data from the UK on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. The first one of these reports will be the main measure of inflation preferred by the Bank of England, the United Kingdom's Consumer Price Index. And uh, as many of you perhaps know, the Bank of England has been uh, in a accommodative monetary policy, they currently expanded the size of their so-called asset purchases program by another 50 billion pounds. And uh, it's going to be important next week to see whether or not the consumer price index is going to be in line with the recent forecast and expectations according to the Bank of England's inflation report, which was expecting that uh, we could see the UK inflation pressure is subsiding going forward. Now, why is that important? Well, the market already knows that the Bank of England is um, in accommodative mode, as are other major central banks, by the way. Pretty much all the rest of the major central banks are also accommodated. But the big question is, how much longer can the Bank of England continue with this asset purchases, expansions, and buying more bonds and assets and so forth and so on, and keeping interest rates at the record low level. Now, here in the, in the United States, we know that the Federal Reserve reaffirmed its commitment earlier this week that they're going to keep rates low until at least late 2014. That's almost three years from now. So rates here are to stay at the record low level. More than likely, the Bank of England is going to keep their rates at only half a percent, which is a record low level for the benchmark there in the UK. But the big question is, will the Bank of England continue to expand the size of its asset purchase program and do more quantitative easing? The size of the uh, program now is at 325 billion pounds after another 50 billion pounds were added earlier in a, a couple of months ago uh, from 2 275 to 325 billion. For the next couple of months, the um, at least I think that the Bank of England is not going to do anything because they're more than likely going to wait until the current 50 billion expansion uh, concludes and the uh, purchases conclude somewhere in uh, May or June in a month ahead. So with that expansion already priced into the pound dollars exchange rate, Economic reports like the inflation report next week, and also later on next week, we're going to see the retail sales report, which is an important gauge of consumer spending, will help us ultimately uh, price in expectations as to whether or not economic conditions are deteriorating in the UK, which could prompt more asset purchases and more quantitative easing by the Bank of England, and vice versa. If economic conditions actually start improving, going forward, and the UK economic data starts showing resilience, then the market expectations will begin to start repriced. And by that, I mean the market's expectations that the Bank of England could continue with more quantitative easing in the near future will begin to get the repriced. And ultimately, that, in my opinion, will lead to uh, the British pound beginning to attract more and more bidders 
I'm not talking about an incredible British pound rally. But what I'm talking about is potential attempt for the pound to continue to uh, push a little bit higher from uh, the current uh, levels that it's trading within, perhaps towards the top of the existing range. And uh, many of you who listen to this program on a regular basis would probably know that when it comes to the pound dollar currency pair developments, there is no trend there. The pound dollar pair is trendless. It has been trendless since October of last year, and it continues to be trendless. And it will continue to be trendless unless a breakout occurs, either above the top of this existing range, which is $61.65, or below the bottom of this range, which is pretty much an important price level in my quarters theory, being the large quarter points at the $1.5250 and the recent lows at the $1.5232 that were reached in uh, January. This, more or less, is the range where the pound dollar exchange rate has been stuck within for a number of months since October of 2011. Now, in the recent month and a half, we have noted that there is a smaller range now that is being established for the pound versus the dollar. And that smaller range is between uh, $1.5643, serving as the bottom of the range, and a dollar fifty nine twenty seven serving as the top of the ring. There were a couple of fake breakouts, and by fake I mean there were breakouts, but they simply did not have a follow through in following trading sessions. The first fake breakout occurred uh, above the top of the range at the dollar fifty nine twenty seven, where the pound actually rallied to as high as dollar fifty nine ninety one, which is the large quarter point area at the dollar and sixty cents. What it looked at that day as a strong bullish breakout failed to have a follow through in the following trading sessions. The pound rally simply fizzled and the pound dollar exchange rate went right back into the previous range. It fell back in that range. When it became apparent that the rally fizzled, the market then decided to challenge the bottom of that range. Which was the dollar fifty six and a half area, the dollar fifty six forty three. Just on Monday of this week, it looked like the bottom of that range is going to be broken. <clears throat> the pound declined to as low as dollar fifty six zero one on Monday. So what looked like a bearish breakout that finally the pound was breaking outside of this range below the bottom of it. What turns out to be is exactly the same thing that we witnessed a couple of weeks ago, a breakout that didn't have a follow through. And then the pound quickly fell back and returned back in that previous range between $1.5643 and $1.5927. Now that it became apparent in recent couple of trading sessions that the pound's not going to break any lower, the next logical move is guess what? Back to the top of the range. And as of today, the pound's already reaching intraday highs, uh, currently trading at the dollar fifty-eight and a half area, and uh, uh, could continue to trail a little bit higher. The top of the range again is the dollar fifty-nine twenty-seven, maybe even challenging the uh, breakout high at the dollar fifty-nine ninety-one. But for the most part, as you can see, there's a roughly four hundred pips of a range between $1.56 and $1.60, where the pound dollar pair has recently established a range and has been fluctuating within it for a number of weeks. Probably I'm looking at maybe a couple of months here. <clears throat> it looks like that the pound dollar pair is still trendless trading in a range. Now, a couple of weeks ago in my outlook for FX Street on a pound dollar pair, I wrote, well, yawn. Someone's really hit the snooze button on the pound dollar pair. But I also warned that we should not get too comfy because ranges do not last indefinitely. And sooner or later, this range is going to be broken. And that's what I'm going to watch for next week. Will any of the U.S. <clears throat> economic reports or the three important U.K. economic reports serve as catalysts? 
for a breakout to occur, either above the top of this range or below the bottom of this range. <clears throat> now, the consumer price index uh, for Tuesday morning <clears throat> in the UK is expected to show a reading of 3.4% year over year, which would be lower than a 3.6% year over year. Those of you who pay attention to the inflation data from the United Kingdom would probably remember that uh, inflation pressures have been subsiding in recent months. At least that is the trend of declining inflation pressures. Just a few months ago, the inflation uh, was at above 5% year over year in the UK. So as you can see, another decline to 3.4% from 3.6% is going to be in line with the current de trend of declining inflation pressures and also in line with the Bank of England's uh, forecast and inflation output. They said that they're expecting inflation pressures to continue to subside throughout 2011. Now, as long as inflation is not an issue, a central bank could continue to afford to be accommodated, especially if economic conditions do not show signs of improvement in the United Kingdom or in the Eurozone for that matter. As we know, <clears throat> the Eurozone is the largest trading partner of the UK. This is why it's important if one is paying attention to the British pound and conditions in the UK economy, to also pay close attention to conditions in the Eurozone. They're both very closely related. And uh, as long as inflation is not an issue, <coughs> excuse me, and inflation pressures continue to decline, then the Bank of England could, and economic conditions uh, are weak. The Bank of England could continue to be accommodated, could even consider another expansion of its asset purchase program going forward. On the other hand, however, if inflationary pressures start increasing rather than declining, and then we start seeing an improvement in economic activity in the Eurozone and also in the United Kingdom, then that creates an environment where the Bank of England is not going to be as accommodative as they currently have. And ultimately, that could serve as a supportive for the British pound fundamental factor. That is the only way that I see the pound actually breaking above these ranges, either above the dollar and 67, uh, 59.27 or dollar 60 and above dollar 61.65. <clears throat> Unless such breakout occurs, however, we're not going to get a more definite trend direction. Now, I expect that uh, the consumer price index in the UK might get be a little bit higher than the consensus forecast next week. And the reason for that is the recent spike <clears throat> in energy costs and oil prices. That could put upward pressure on the consumer price index in the United Kingdom, just as they did put upward pressure in the consumer price index in the Eurozone that we saw earlier this week, and also in the United States that we saw earlier this morning. 0.4% month-over-month increase in inflation and pressures is what we saw from the U.S. this morning, compared with 0.2% in the previous month. So I wouldn't be surprised if inflation and pressures were to rise <clears throat> with the report on Tuesday which ultimately could end up being a British pound supportive due to the reasons I explained earlier, reducing the odds of the Bank of England doing more quantitative easing. And that ultimately could help the British pound to at least challenge the top of these existing range, whether it's dollar fifty nine twenty seven or dollar fifty nine ninety one. However, on Thursday of next week, we're going to have the UK retail sales which is an important event as far as consumer spending is concerned. It's uh, one of the main gauges of consumer spending. It, it measures the retail uh, total sales at retail establishment. And the UK economy, just as the US economy, is very much consumer spending dependent. Most, the larger part of the UK and the US economy are services related which are dependent on consumer spending. So if consumer spending is not rising in the United Kingdom, then that could be a sign of economic weakness. And the retail sales from the UK, by the way, <coughs> this is a, one of the top 10 events for Thursday. Uh, for next week, it's uh, due next Thursday at 5.30 a.m. Eastern time. Could 
potentially become a risk event for the British pound. In other words, the pound's move that could target the top of this range could see an exhaustion on Thursday if the markets actually, if we get to see a retail sales report, which is disappointing. The consensus forecasts are pointing to a 0.5% drop month over month in UK retail sales. That is compared with 0.9% month over month increase in the previous month. So that could be a risk event for the pound, and uh, that is due on Thursday. But ahead of that report, on Tuesday with the Consumer Price Index, and also on Wednesday we'll have another important report, the minutes from the Bank of England's meeting earlier in March, at which, by the way, the Bank of England decided to keep the status quo as expected. They had already raised the uh, uh, asset purchase program increases by 50 billion pounds more and decided to keep rates and change to 0.5 percent that <clears throat> wednesday's uh, report uh, the bank of england's meeting minutes mean support could serve as a reminder that the bank of england is currently not in a hurry to change the status quo which ultimately is also a british pound positive as i feel that the current expansion is already baked into the pound exchange rate it may have been negative these expectations of us for more quantitative easing, but I think that's already priced in, that's behind us. What is not very clear is whether or not there will be future quantitative easing. Uh, I at least do not foresee more quantitative easing by the Bank of England anywhere in uh, the next few months. Maybe in a latter part of 2012 and the second half of 2012, but I think the Bank of England is done for now. And as long as the market also prices these expectations that the Bank of England is down for now, the pound could continue to attract some bids. Again, however, if UK economic data starts deteriorating and the retail sales could be one of those reports next Thursday, that could prevent the British pound to break higher above the top of this range versus the US dollar. So although it might challenge the top of this range, if it doesn't break above it, that would be a sign of weakness. And then on Thursday, the pound comes under pressure as a result of a disappointing retail sales report. Or, for that matter, if next week, throughout next week, we get to see more of a risk averse market environment, we know that also the British pound is not going to be immune from more risk averse, which could weigh on that currency as well. So, in other words, the range could potentially sustain throughout next week. And not to say that there is no opportunity within this range. I mean, it's obviously it's about 400 fifths of a range. Opportunities can be explored when it comes to range bound trading and fluctuations. But as far as an actual trend direction, I hate to say it, but those looking for a trend for the pound versus the dollar might see another week of disappointment as the pound dollar stays trendless confined within its existing range. Now, the uh, UK economic data next week is also going to be coupled with a sequence of US economic data from the US housing market. Beginning next Tuesday, with uh, the housing stocks and building formats, which is a leading indicator of housing market conditions. I am not expecting any kind of fireworks and super excitement from the US economic data, uh, housing market data, that is. Pretty much every other sector of the US economy has been improving, including the labor market, as we have diligently paid close attention to that trend since the beginning of the fourth quarter of 2011. The trend continues, and there's a problem across the board. However, the U.S. housing market is still not showing anything spectacular, so to say. And that is not a problem because the housing market is the um, last sector of the U.S. economy that is going to be improving as a result of other sector improvements, especially the labor market. 
Generally speaking, economists say that the housing market data could start improving about six months after the labor market, up to six months after the labor market starts improving. And so in recent months, we've seen the, the, the uh, jobs market here in the U.S. Uh, showing signs of consistent improvement. The uh, housing market will take a while before we start seeing those signs. And this is why the, the housing starts are only going to pretty much stay at 70, 700,000, according to the consensus forecast, which is the same number as uh, it was in January. And uh, building permits uh, would pretty much stay within the same range, uh, 690,000 is the consensus forecast number, compared with uh, 680,000 in a previous month. Again, nothing really spectacular. I already said the Bank of England's meeting minutes is another important report from the UK that's coming up on Wednesday morning at 5.30 a.m. Eastern Time. As I said earlier, more than likely a reminder that the Bank of England is going to do nothing for at least a few more months. Then the existing home sales, which is the main gauge of the U.S. housing market conditions, is going to hit the news wires on Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Again, Nothing spectacular is uh, expected from that report. Uh, reading of 4.61 million existing home sales is the consensus forecast number compared with 4.57 million in a previous month. Nothing spectacular, but at least a little bit higher. As long as that's the case, then that's in line with the signs of improvement in U.S. economic data and the economy in general. And uh, as long as uh, the U.S. economic data continues to show signs of improvement, you know that I've been saying for months that reduces the odds of the Fed doing more quantitative easing. As the Fed refrained from doing so earlier this week, they were a little bit more hawkish in their uh, outlook for the economy. As we noted uh, on Tuesday after the Fed's interest rate announcement, as a result, the U.S. dollar found some strength. If, however, economic conditions start deteriorating in the U.S., don't be surprised if the dollar is put again under pressure on rising odds of uh, the Fed doing more. That Fed refraining from doing more earlier this week doesn't mean that they are completely excluding the possibility of the so-called QE number three starting, and they will be ready to deploy it, in my opinion, as long as the U.S. economic data shows a couple of months of uh, signs of, uh, uh, of uh, swollen or uh, signs of weakening, I should say. And this is why it's important going forward to continue to see the U.S. economic data improving. Otherwise, the QE number three odds are going to be raised. Next week, we'll pay attention to the New Zealand Growth Domestic Product Report, which is an important gauge of economic activity and growth. Just as in Australia, the New Zealand economy is expected to weaken. Uh, growth is expected to weaken in a fourth quarter. 0.6% uh, quarter over quarter increases the consensus forecast number. That is compared with 0.8% quarter, quarter over quarter increase or growth in the third quarter of 2011. It's not a dramatic decline, but it's a slowdown in economic growth, which is pretty much in line with uh, what we witnessed uh, in other major economies, especially the Australian economy, which uh, is the largest trading partner of New Zealand, by the way. The second largest trading partner of New Zealand is China. So as long as Australia and China are slowing, then the New Zealand economy could slow down. We had an unexpected statement Right after the day after the interest rate announcement last week by the New uh, Zealand Central Bank, the Reserve Bank of New Zealand, the governor came out in an interview on television and said that, um, quote, and I'm trying to, I'm not giving you the exact quote, but something in a way of traders should not think that bidding on the New Zealand dollar is a, uh, strength is a sure bet is what he said, which is, I think was a jawboning kind of language that uh, signals that the Reserve Bank of New Zealand and the government there are 
getting a bit worried about the strength of the New Zealand dollar and the current levels of the New Zealand dollar is trading at versus the dollar are not very far from being close to record highs for the uh, New Zealand currency. So this is why it's going to be interesting to see next week if uh, New Zealand economy starts weakening. Ultimately, if that will uh, lead to some New Zealand, additional New Zealand dollar weakness as well. Now, the New Zealand dollar is uh, also one of those currency pairs that is trendless, I would say, in recent um let me draw another line for you so you can see the two ranges here that have been recently established. That's the first range here. After the New Zealand dollar established a uh, uh, resistance in a 0.8470 area, which is the area of the large quarter point with 80, uh, 0.85 cents. It declined towards uh, the double bottom support here, uh, which was in uh, the large quarter point area at 0.8250. So what we're talking about is a range that is in line with the 255th range of the large quarter between 80, 0.8250 and 0.85. Now, last week, the New Zealand dollar broke below the bottom of that range. And uh, it reached as low as 0.8115. Then it moved back to target the uh, previous support in the bottom of the range. It overshot a little bit, but generally throughout this week, it has managed to stay below the bottom and the resistance of uh, this previous support level, the bottom of the previous range. And as long as that continues the, to be the case, maybe next week, if the pound continues, if the New Zealand dollar rather, continues to not be able to break above 0.8 to 50 large four point and move back in that previous range, it could establish another range and that range would be the next pretty much large quarter of 250 pips between 0.8250 and a large quarter point at uh, 0.8. With uh, recent lows uh, perhaps serving as the initial bottom of that range and a potential target at uh, 0.8060, the low from yes, which is about 60 pips above the 80 cents mark. So don't be surprised if the New Zealand dollar is also uh, range bound throughout next week. If it fails to break above 0.8250, it will continue to trail lower, uh, potentially targeting the bottom of that uh, of that range. At 0.8060 or maybe even the 0.80 level, because the 0.80, you will remember, was the support level right there at this point, uh, which was uh, January the 25th. It was a level area of support. Uh, wait a second. Was it exactly 0.80 or was it 0.8040? Okay, it was 0.8040, so 40 pips above the 80 cents level. So the move yesterday was a move to target that support level there. And that could establish itself as the bottom of that uh, weekly range next week. Going forward with the important economic data next week. After the New Zealand dollar gross domestic product report, we're going to see an important event and probably the only top 10 event uh, and probably the only important event from the Eurozone next week, which is the uh, Manufacturing and Services Purchasing Managers Index. Now, these are flash estimates, uh, preliminary estimates for the uh, manufacturing and services uh, activity in those two sectors of the Eurozone economy. And in recent months, there has been an improvement in economic conditions there. Uh, both of these indexes have been climbing towards the 50 uh, level. Many of you perhaps know that when it comes to the purchasing managers indexes, 50 is the dividing line between economic expansion and contraction. A reading above 50 indicates expansion. A reading uh, below 50 is a contraction territory. Now, although both the manufacturing and the services purchasing managers indexes from the Eurozone are expected to strengthen for another month, they both are still expected to stay below 50. The services uh, index is expected to show a reading of 49.4, which is higher than 48.8 in a previous month. 
The manufacturing index is expected to show a reading of 49.6 compared with the reading of 49 in a previous month. Again, expected to be a little bit better than they were in the previous month, but still, generally speaking, in contraction territory below 50. Now, if there should be a positive surprise and both of these indexes, or at least one of them, manages next week to climb above the 50 level, then that ultimately could help the euro, in my opinion. It will be a sign of improvement in a eurozone uh, economic activity. And it might alleviate the uh, concerns that the eurozone economy is going to go through the so-called mild recession a technical recession where we get to see two quarters of negative economic growth, something that the European Central Bank president himself warned about as he took his new position as a president last year. He was very quick to undo the triche interest rate hikes of 50 basis points. And in the final months, November and December of last year, remember the European Central Bank cut rates by 50 basis points, undoing Trichet's height. This was all due to the concerns and the potential of a mild recession. We saw the Eurozone economy uh, contracting indeed in the fourth quarter of 2011. And now if we get to see another second quarter of negative economic growth in the first quarter of 2012, then that would be the so-called technical recession, the basic definition of a recession, two negative quarters of uh, of uh, economic contraction, negative uh, GDP growth. However, if uh, we do get to see the economic data, such as the manufacturing and services indexes, which are leading indicators of future economic conditions, pointing to an improvement, then that would be a positive news. It will alleviate concerns of uh, the recession lasting for too long, and it also would alleviate uh, the market expectations to reduce the market expectations that the European Central Bank could cut rates going forward. Of course, that if the market continues to anticipate that the European Central Bank will produce more rate cuts in upcoming months, then that's obviously euro negative. If the market reduces these expectations, then that is a euro positive. And that is pretty much the relationships that will monitor going forward when it comes to the eurozone economic data does the data strengthen and ultimately reduce the odds of uh, more cuts by the european central bank and more quantitative easing and other measures uh, other accommodative monetary policy measures or if the eurozone economy continues to weaken then obviously the european central bank would do more to stimulate the economy which includes more interest rate cuts which is a euro negative now the euro is bouncing off of uh, the dollar and 30 cents level, which is an important level in my course theory. It is the important junction between two 1,000 foot ranges, the dollar 30 and the dollar 40. We'll take a look at the uh, euro dollar daily chart. And uh, you will see what I'm talking about here. Here's the euro bouncing off of the dollar and 30 cents level yesterday, reaching finding support at the dollar 30, zero to a couple of bits above the dollar and 30 cents level. Now correcting these uh, losses here in uh, recent uh, week or so by uh, targeting and as we speak moving above the previous uh, the first important resistance level ahead, which was the support from October at the dollar thirty one forty four. Another resistance level it seems to be being approached, and that is the dollar thirty one ninety eight. You would call that level which was the high from uh, December 21st. Shortly above that level, it's uh, $1.3232, which is close to the large quarter point at the $1.3250. Above that level, we have recent resistance established at the $1.3290. And a little bit above it, we have the $1.3321, which is another important resistance level ahead for the euro. The euro dollar pair is trailing within familiar, clearly established ranges. And the current range for the euro dollar pair has now become the range between of roughly two large quarters of 250 pips each. The current range is between $1.30 and $1.35. 
We had a double top resistance. Uh, that's actually not a double top. It's tri triple or even quadruple top resistance. Recently established a little bit below the dollar and thirty-five cents level, the dollar thirty-four. Eighty-five, wasn't it? Resistance there from uh, beginning of February twenty-fourth. The euro uh, was not capable of breaking above that resistance. It uh, sold out and it uh, made a move to dollar and thirty cents large measure large four point, with support a little bit below it at the dollar twenty-nine seventy-three which is roughly the dollar and 30 cents level. You had a previous double bottom support, a weekly range double bottom support at the dollar 30, 25 right here. So the happy medium between dollar 35 and uh, dollar 30, 25 cents and uh, dollar 29, 73 is what? Pretty much the dollar and 30 cents level. This is why the dollar 30 cents level is now the bottom of the existing range. The top is dollar 34.85, which is pretty much the large quarter point at the dollar and 35 cents. This is where I expect the euro dollar exchange rate to continue to fluctuate throughout next week. And uh, on that move higher, watch for this area, which is the dollar and 33 cents area. If uh, the euro encounters resistance at that area, then a move to challenge the top of this range may not occur. The euro could exhaust and put head back low. And um, again, a lot of these currency pairs, as you can see, are trendless. They're pretty much range bound. Not to say again that this, there's no opportunities when we see a lot of currency pairs trading in ranges, but one has to adjust their strategy based on whether there's a trending environment or whether there is a range bound environment. And currently the environment, to me at least, is a range environment rather than a trend. Uh, going forward for the top 10 economic events, uh, next week we're also going to pay attention to, as I said earlier, the UK retail sales coming up on Thursday, could be a risk event for the uh, British pound. And uh, after that, we'll see the jobless claims, the U.S. economic data continuing with uh, another labor market report, the usual for every Thursday morning weekly jobless claims. Expected to show a reading of uh, 355,000, increasing to 355,000 from 351,000. The, there is a uh, trend in recent months of consistent improvement in unemployment claims. Many of you probably know if you listen throughout 2011 to my weekly outlook or the All Things Forex broadcast, I have been like a broken record talking about 375,000, which was the number that economists estimate that uh, jobless claims would have to fall below 375,000 in order for us to start seeing improvement in U.S. labor market conditions and ultimately reduction in the unemployment rate. This is what I've been watching throughout 2011. And finally, jobless claims in recent months have began to decline below 375,000 and have stayed below 375,000. We are now targeting the 350,000 area. And a 4,000 increase from 351,000, I think, is not a dramatic increase. It does not change the trend of improvement in uh, jobless claims. And ultimately, as long as that continues to be the case, the jobs market, very important part of the Fed's dual mandate. Fed has a dual mandate to maintain price stability, price stability in other words, control inflation and pressures. And at the same time, make sure that there is a full employment in the United States. So that is why future improvement in the U.S. labor market will only continue to reduce the odds of the Fed doing more quantitative easing, which ultimately is a U.S. dollar policy. So jobless claims is another important report next week. Then we'll see on Friday the Canadian Consumer Price Index, uh, which is expected uh, to see inflationary pressures peaking up a little bit uh, by 0.5% month over month from 0.4%. Uh, 
in the previous month. The dollar, Canadian dollar currency pair, I don't think that that increase in inflation pressures will be enough to prompt the Bank of Canada uh, to hike interest rates anytime soon. Uh, Bank of Canada, as we know, it last week was one of the, uh, they announced last Thursday, was one of the major central banks that decided to keep the status quo um, things exactly as they are. Current currency policy is not changing. Um, but again, if inflation pressures start increasing more significantly, then of course the Bank of Canada might be prompted to uh, continue the high rates. The Canadian dollar is uh, trading also in a range versus the US dollar. It's a rather tight range. Uh, let's put the dollar loony currency pair on your screen real quick. So you can see how tight things are getting. Now, here is the most recent range for the dollar versus the Canadian dollar. We've been confined with them pretty much throughout uh, the last month. Since mid-February, we can see a double top resistance being established over here in that parity level, par parity area between the uh, dollar and uh, uh, 50 pips. 1.0050 was the high there on uh, uh, February 16th. An identical high, the double top there at uh, 1.0048. Uh, an attempt to challenge the top of this range at dollar and a half area, unsuccessful to break above it. Still keeps the uh, dollar loony exchange rate uh, stuck within this range, which is uh, roughly between uh, 1.0050 and uh, the double bottom support here from a few weeks ago at uh, 0 0.98 and a half area, 0.9843 is that uh, bottom of the range. So it is a couple of hundred foot range. It's a tight range between 0 0.98 and a half and $1.50. And, uh, serving as the top of the range. And you can see that range getting even tighter here as the dollar, um, Canadian dollar currency pair is trailing now throughout this week between 0.99 and a half and uh, 0.9880. This is the even tighter range that we're seeing. It's not an exception to other major currency pairs. As I've shown you, the pound dollar pair is confined within a range. The euro dollar pair is confined within a range. Dollar Canadian dollar confined within a range. When the range starts getting even tighter, then uh, be prepared that this could be the quiet before the storm, so to say. That these ranges are not going to last indefinitely. And ultimately, we'll see next week if any of the economic reports also serve as catalysts for the uh, dollar Canadian dollar to exit its range. Again, it is a range bound environment. It's not a trending environment. And the dollar Canadian dollar uh, exchange rate, by the way, is confined within not only the smaller range in recent months, it's confined within an even larger range. It's been trendless also pretty much since uh, October of last year. And that range is between uh, roughly the dollar zero six and a half area and uh, recent lows, uh, well, not so recent since when was that? Uh, August of last year at uh, 0.9724. So it's uh, about 900 pips of a, of a range there. <clears throat> and uh, after the Canadian Consumer Price Index, uh, the final top 10 event next week is going to be the U.S. new home sales, that will wrap up the sequence of uh, important uh, housing market data from the United States. And again, I'm not expecting anything spectacular from the new home sales report either. Consensus forecasts are expecting an increase by 326,000 uh, compared to 321,000 in the previous month. As long as we get to see an increase in existing home sales and uh, the new home sales, even if it's by a few thousand, it's uh, still not spectacular, but at least uh, maintains the positive bias for the U.S. economic data. Now, there's a question 
from uh, a listener who says, on your chart, all bullish arrow signal for the euro dollar, dollar 30 up to dollar 40, 1,000 pips, your theory. All right, so I'm guessing here that he's asking whether the euro could strengthen to go up to the dollar and 40 cents level. Certainly that's uh, not impossible. However, uh, in my quarter theory, I propose that every significant price move occurs from one large quarter point targeting another large quarter point. In other words, thinking, taking things one large quarter at a time, <clears throat> it is a lot easier to forecast a 250 pips move than a thousand pips, if that makes any sense. Recently acknowledging that the euro dollar pair is trading within a range, which is now being established between dollar thirty and dollar thirty five cents, as I said earlier, there are two large quarters of two hundred and fifty pips within that range. The first one is the quarter between dollar thirty and the dollar thirty two fifty. The second large quarter would be between dollar thirty two fifty and a dollar and thirty five cents. So that is why I said earlier, <coughs> excuse me, is going to be important next week to see whether the euro dollar pair does complete the quarter to dollar thirty two fifty, whether it breaks above the resistance of dollar thirty one ninety eight. It's already breaking above dollar thirty one forty four, obviously today. That was the previous support turning resistance on the way up from October. Dollar thirty one forty four was broken today. We are seeing the euro moving to challenge the next level of resistance which is $1.3198. That is the high from December 24th. Shortly above it, you have $1.3232, which is 18 fifths below the large quarter point, $1.3250. If the euro goes to $1.3232, that completes the quarter to $1.3250. As long as prices reach within 25 fifths from a targeted large quarter point, I consider the large quarter move as successfully completed. However, if the euro does not break above dollar thirty-two fifty, if uh, it stays below it, or if it stays below these two other resistance levels, which are dollar thirty-two ninety-one and dollar thirty-three twenty-one, they're about shortly above the dollar thirty-two fifty large quarter point. These two resistance levels could prevent the completion of the large quarter between dollar thirty two fifty and a dollar and thirty five and that is why I said earlier that if the euro falters at these levels, it may not complete the quarter to dollar thirty five cents it may not challenge the top of the existing range at dollar thirty four seventy and then that bullish euro momentum could exhaust, and we could see it coming under pressure and making another move to challenge the bottom. Of the existing range at the dollar and thirty cents. Considering all of this, it is too early for us to call for a move to a dollar and forty cents. And I hope that makes sense. Thank you all very much for listening today. Before we finish, <clears throat> I would like to invite you to join me on a daily basis and uh, listen to my daily analysis by joining the All Things Forex live daily broadcast Monday to Friday on AllThingsForex.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at All Things Forex is the Twitter account at All Things Forex. Thank you all very much for attending today's webinar. Have a great day and a great weekend. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again next Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time.